Sup? Been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> All right. In case you forgot, name's Rack. I'm a coach, and this is the roast. How you fucking doing? So, it is preseason. Preseason is here, and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we have an absolute metric butt ton of uh, stuff that's changed. Now, I understand this video is probably going to be long, and if it gets any longer after the time I've said this, then it'll probably be split into multiple things, so make sure you check all the videos for all your stuff, because there's just a lot of shit in this in this content list, bro. Like, just look at it. Look at this. Look at this list. Anyway, but yeah, there's a lot of shit that needs to be like looked at. I'm going to try and give the best, most in-depth version of my uh, my thoughts on this. Now, I'm going to try and refrain from my usual uh, philosophical differences with Riot Games until at least the end, and let it be its own part of the video, but unfortunately I don't have anyone to stop me this time around, so if, any <laughs> if, the, if it goes off the rails, then I apologize in advance, but just keep in mind, I have not looked over any of these changes. I've seen a little bit of PBE prior, so you are going to get my very first like raw response as normal. So that sh that's never going to change because I know you you all love watching me freak out every time I see something for the first time. Um, but yeah, the main thing is my plan is to get as much info out as possible in the time. I obviously have a lot to live up to with other content creators providing hours and hours of content based on this. And once this is sorted out, I will probably start looking at uh, updating all my content for my students. So yeah, it's going to be a very, very, very long set of videos coming up ahead. So let's start from the top. So preseason is here. There's a lot of big shake shakeups. There's mythic items. There's this. There's that. There's all the usual stuff you're expecting. I'm not going to bother with the video. Should I bother with the video? Nah. Fuck it. I'll get there. I know I'm going to see it. Mythic items, item upgrades. The item shop has been... Oh, sorry. I heard the item shop got revamped too. Everyone's having a bit of a tanty about that one. I like the look of the skins. All right. So let's get into it. So let's start from the top. So we've got the very new item shop with the new layout and such. Now, as far as I can tell, this doesn't affect like anything too bad if you have item sets already put in. But... People are already fuming because, you know, change is horrible, blah, 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 etc. Wham, wham, wham. I'm not, I don't like things changing, etc. Can we just be honest for a second? The shop has always been ugly. Chat? Always. Folks, if you've ever wondered just how bad, like, the shop has looked over the years, it hasn't really been updated. It's only been updated once ever since its inception, like, ever since the beginning of League of Legends. And even then, the layout wasn't changed at all. It was literally just a stock grid horrible like thing there if you're a newer player and you don't know what the hell half of these items do in the first place there was a crap load of just junk like just junk items that just didn't do anything right so having items that actually give like strong recommendations or at least a good idea of what to look for is a necessity especially when you've literally taken an axe to the entire item makeup of this game you want people to be prepared so on a philosophical level which i'm going to try and avoid for the most part this is actually a good change. So don't be all up in my... Sh actually, you know what? Get all up in my comments and tell me just how much you love or hate the new item shop. Because I'm curious. I think it needed a change. Obviously, it's going to take a little bit to get used to. But, eh. But, yeah. I believe that it's uh, there's a necessity towards changing up the shop. Because it truly does... It did need a lot of... Uh, it did need a lot of, like... Uh, I just did a lot of the clarity updates because they were just, you're just looking at a grid and it just says, oh, this item provides X stat. And it's like, oh, why is it, wh why would I want an item that provides move speed? But I mean, like, so the best one is like, oh, I'm looking for an item that provides uh, move speed or cooldown reduction. And you're like, you look at the cooldown reduction items and like, cooldown reduction items were like always the most awkward thing in the universe, right? And then suddenly you look at it, you're like, oh, all right, I'm going to get a cooldown reduction item, and I'm an AP mage. All right, what do I get? Let's get Frozen Heart. Shit, that's not right. <laughs> so, 
having actual clarity amongst like the things instead of just listing them out into really weird like categories it must be murder for a new person like i try to think all the way back to when i was a little noob noob wreck like tiny little noob wreck in the corner and i was wondering like just how much it meant to me to have clarity in the store and this is back in the day when needly was an ap poke manager and i used to build triforce on it because that was what was recommended you know wits end used to be a recommended item on ash believe me the shop has come a long way and you should be happy for it be very happy for it there's, there's your little lesson today all right now is this actually interactable no nah, it's not i'm just losing my shit <laughs> hang on <I'll> just wait. <laughs> you can tell i've just woken up huh? i'm like oh this looks interactable I'm like, why would i even think that like it's obviously just a picture wreck like, come on Recommended items page displays relevant items for your champion based on where you are currently in your build. Updates in real time. Cool. Who you're up against and how the game is progressing. It's going to provide a quick way for you to understand what comes next on your journey to go plus ultra. The data-driven recommendations. Presented items update based on what the most popular build is for your champion. Find out if an item will help you specifically and stop a pesky opponent if it's generally an all-around good choice for item advice. So there's actually item advice there too. I Okay, whoever's updating this in the backdrop, I hope is actually like paying attention because the recommended item builds originally were not great. They were very basic and they kind of worked on like the lowest level possible. But if it's actually like pulling the data effectively, I hope it's pulling it from like higher level games. I hope it's not pulling it from like, oh, everyone in bronze builds X item because they think it's amazing. And like the item's been nerfed for like three and a half months and they're still building it. It's like, Ugh. but yeah, hopefully like there is some human element to this that involves like actually looking at higher rated things and like pasting that in there. But other than that, it shouldn't be too much trouble, but yeah, hopefully the all items sector is a little bit easier to maintain. I am, at least now they've actually gone over like the whole thing and properly like lined out what an epic, a legendary and, and like item tiers like that exist because they didn't before. I kind of just had to roll with it as if it was like tier one for like the smaller stuff, tier two, etc. Like, cause the, it wasn't really like clear cut ironed out there and it will be a little difficult to figure out, but at least you've got the filters here to make things easier for you. And it looks like this quick menu on the side here will at least give you some simple choices to work with. Or at the very least, this is just consumables and boots, in which case I'm totally okay with that because at the very least, you need to at least have some sort of these in your thing, especially a control ward. Don't think I'm not watching. Don't think I don't see it. If you're not remembering wards, you're going to get the paper. Where's my paper? All right, my paper's here. My paper's still here and I will bring it back if you're not warding. Remember this. Remember this. <laughs> Alright. So that said, layout's fine. All items pages where you go, you want to see all the items. They've got class tabs, recommended tabs, and stat filter. There is a stat filter. So this is probably what the stat filter is for. I hope it's actually like easy to maintain. Because that look by the looks of things, I don't think anyone's gonna realize that this is there at the first place. So just remember you gotta click it, it fills in the color, and you'll be able to go from there. Just uh, keep that in mind because it looks like people are gonna forget this. <laughs> Quick buy panels. Oh, this is what this thing on the side is. Is it only for boots? Hang on. Yeah, continuable stab, boots, stab, and inventory tab. Fuck, I'm just, I'm a clairvoyant. I see it in advance. It's all there. I already know what it, we're looking for. So that's what you need, right? You need to be prepared for it. There are a lot of boots in here that I'm, you know, I hope they're just all updates, but maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. You know, maybe they're going the dirt around here. These are all 300 gold, but they've got different looks. Don't speculate. I will get there when I get there. All right. Let's, that said, let's go down. Oh boy. I'm going to need a drink. I'm going to figure out if I needed to spike this anyway through. Mm hmm. All right. Mythic items. Mythic items are the new highest item tier that will become the cornerstone of your build with big effects that define your playstyle in each game. You can only own one at a time, so selecting a mythic item and the effects it grants depends on your opponents in the game state. Now, I don't want to be harsh on this line, but this has never been the case. So unless there are some really big differences between these items, I am not feeling this idea. You're going to go the one-size-fits-all slot-efficient choice, which has always been the rules of League of Legends, and we're going to see how much this changes up. So... That's it. Your mythic also sets the tone for the rest of your build, but in terms of what other teams you want, other items you want to pick up, 
as well as the mythic passive that adds extra stats to your other fully completed items, now known as legendary items. Mythic items generally carry the most complex effects and strongly impact your playstyle. Even with the addition of a new tier of items, our goal isn't to, isn't to inflate the power of items overall. Now, based on what I heard about the PvE, this is 100% what's going on, so we'll see. Mythics make your first choice more powerful than in the past, but we're borrowing that strength from the other item tiers to keep build strength relatively similar on the whole. So if that, so what we're looking at, right, is do we try to avoid the whole one item spike, two item spike thing, where in the case of it, you kind of just surge up to the top with power and then just taper off like on and on rather than just consistently, like, do you just have like this big surge and then just keep like, on a, on a relatively linear curve from there? Or is it just going to like continuously make heavy spikes in the, in the damage curve to make this difficult to build against, right? Because I assume mythic items don't just apply to uh, damage items, they apply to defensive items too. But we're going to see in a sec. Anyway, mythic items are unique, you can only go in one. Mythic passive, each item has a passive grants your legend so it get, grants bonus stats to your legendary items too so we're going to see just what kind of items are effective on that as well mythic item icons are animated in the shop and the hud Ooh, obviously can't see that here so i can't tell you how pretty they are but you know we'll get we'll figure it out all right the first item gale force mobility this is oh they're labeled okay Gale Force gives marksman champions a way to dodge high impact skill shots or aggressively finish off low health targets so Costs 3,400 gold, builds from a Noon Quiver. Noon Quiver? A Cloak of Agility, a Pickaxe, and 625 gold. Attack damage, 55. Attack speed, 20%. Critical Strike chance, 20%. So it's not a really high attack damage value, considering. I feel like it's got the same stats as the old Storm Razor. But yeah. Cloud Burst. So this is the, obviously the effect itself is worth a lot of gold, like, in a, in a, in a, in a vacuum, so to speak. So you got to really think about just how much money the, these passives are worth. And if you go for like the most slot efficient choice or the one that gives the biggest payoff, then you'll probably just be aiming for that. So cloud burst, a dash in a target direction, firing three missiles at the lowest health enemy near your destination, prioritizing champions deals a total of 180 to 315 based on levels less than or equal to 10 up to 18, plus 45% bonus AD, magic damage. This does magic damage. What is this hybrid crap? Again. Fuck. All right. Magic damage increased against low health targets by up to 50% on a 90 second cooldown. So you have a 90 second short dash. Doesn't give a, is there a range? <laughs> no, there's no range here. It just says dash in target direction. It doesn't tell you how far you dash. <laughs> Mythic extra grants all other legendary items 3% movement speed. Is that if they do already have it or don't already have it? Hmm. If they do already have it and it adds on to it, sure. If they don't already have it and it gives it movement speed by default, then you're just going to get free movement speed. So that's always nice. But if it like starts multiplying on top of everything else you already have, then it gets a bit nasty, doesn't it? doesn't it all right now this is the only thing this is the only gripe i have right if you're an ad carry and you have an execute that deals magic damage that is very hard to build against and this is the the kind of shit that like everyone has always hated since the beginning and yet we are still on this path now i understand it's magic damage to try and prevent the whole uh like the whole thing about like lethality will make it fucking broken. But unfortunately, when you have a magic damage scaling, uh, sorry, it scales off of AD, but it's magic damage, right? That automatically on its own makes it very hard to build against. So say you're a support player, and unless like the, the wheels have turned for support as well, it's not going to make it any better or worse about how this is going to just suddenly build up. So like a support is not going to suddenly get an, a, an armor item that just they press a button and it gives a magic resist. Or does it? We'll find out today. Probably not. But yeah. Um, like, if you're trying to build, and especially if you're, you're trying to build against an AD carry that has, like, hybrid scalings, that's always been a problem. Which means you have to build, like, X amount of health. Like, this is a flat execute, so it's not so bad. But, like, as a first item, getting something that actually deals an extra 200 damage that early on is kind of crazy for me. Especially if you finish this item fast. Like, you just get, like, free... 
like a free damage dash that will get you all this extra work. Now, granted, we, the the values that are missing here are the actual length of the like the range of the dash, plus the actual radius of the actual radius of uh, where your your AOE prioritizes from. So, like, say it's only a small distance between the two. Like, you're not going to really know unless you're, like, clank, like clanging into your opponent, really. But if it's, like, 400 range or something, then it's not particularly terrible. But it's not like you're going to use... It's not like you're going to dash away from your opponent to try and be safe, and then suddenly, oh, well, I can't use my execute anymore because 90 second cooldown. So, I guess there is an effective amount of choice there, but I'm just not buying into it. I'm really not. <clears throat> It just seems really awkward that that would be the case, but I mean, this item's still good on its own, depending on like what the actual other items are granted from the movement speed, but yeah, it's fine. All right, Kraken Slayer, anti-tank. Ooh. Kraken Slayer allows a free-firing marksman to cut even the beefiest enemies down to sites free-firing. All right, 33, wait, are these all the same cost? They seem to be all the same cost so far. 3,400 gold, new equipment, cloak of agility pick. These are all the same items involved. But this gives... Wait. With the same... What? Now I'm just confused. With the same amount of items going into it, this gains 5 extra AD, 5% extra attack speed. And it's an anti-tank weapon. That doesn't make sense. Why would you... Alright. Effects. Every third basic attack deals an additional 60 true... Da Alright. It deals an additional 60 plus 30% bonus AD true damage. I am suddenly losing the need to build this item unless I really care about the mobility and movement speed because this item already does everything you possibly want on its own. It grants all other legendary items 10% attack speed. This is automatically better than the previous one. Unless your aim is to verse a thousand assassins and kill them off as fast as you can, this, there is no point in building this item. Unless your goal is to like literally kill like these particular people. Every third basic attack dealing bonus true damage is just amazing as it is. If you're an AD carry, you kind of just want this by default because it will deal the most DPS. It's free. It's, a, it's got more attack speed than the, than the Gale Burst already. So it's just really awkward that that's really the case. But yeah. There's not really a, a lot extra to say to this, because at least this isn't like percent health true damage, like or something like Vayne can use on, on extra. But just the fact that this deals true damage on its own makes it already amazing. Like, you could even see, like, Bruises building this item, because why the fuck not? Like, it's literally that kind of item that just gives you that free sort of, like, deal with it stat value that no one can really build into, because you need to have extra health to deal with this by default, but it still scales off of bonus AD, so you're just... And it's not as if, like, particular roles are the only ones that are locked into uh, building these items, right? Like, if you have something that can... I mean, I'm only at the second item and I'm already losing my mind, but we can... <laughs> I can only assume it's going to get weirder from here. Is it going to get weirder from here? We'll find out. All right. But yeah, getting free attack speed on top of that as well. Like, depending on how much value you put into move speed by default just to escape these particular things, it's not a huge difference, but we shall see. We shall see. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to lose my mind over that shit just yet. All right. Immortal Shield Bow. Survive burst. All right. Immortal Shield Bow helps marksman champions survive burst damage and fight their way back from the brink. Just so I have this right. Are these just only intended for range characters? This is not it, right? It's not as if only marksmen can build mythic items, but yet here we are. Like this is literally. Oh, these are literally made for marksmen, which leads me to worry that like we have. So many mythic items in this game that I'm going to puke. That's literally where we're at. <laughs> All right. I really should... I, 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 this is probably one of the only universes where I might have thought maybe looking at the PBE might have been a good idea, but then you would lose all that shock value, chat. You'd lose it all. All right. So finally, a different build path we have here. So same end cost. So Noon Quiver, Cloak of Agility, a Vampiric Scepter instead of a Pickaxe. And 600 gold. You get 50 AD as well. 15 attack speed. 20 crit chance. And 12 life. Ooh, 12 life steal. That's still pretty good. I wonder what the rune changes are. 
just going to keep that in mind. If there's rune changes that, are, that don't involve bloodline, then all right. All right. Lifeline. We're taking damage that we reduce. Oh, it's this item. All right. You get, so this is the lifeline shield that puts you down there, right? And you get, oh, so this is literally more of Malmortius' passive. Okay. Does that mean more of Malmortius has been removed? Probably. Grants all other legendary items five attack damage and 50 health. All right. So, from what I'm understanding here, if this is the so-called end, end game item that like, that is the meant to be the successor to Mora Malmordius and Sterex Gage. Does that mean those two items are, are removed? And if so, does that mean that we don't have Hex Drinker anymore? All right, I'm a little nervous now. Not having Hex Drinker anymore makes me a little bit nervous. Anyway. The, by the sounds of this, though, this doesn't actually matter what type of damage you're taking. So, like, you just build this, and just no matter what damage comes at you, you don't have to build anything extra for either or. But then you just build the defenses to that item where necessary, and you can come out ahead on that. But let's see. Oh, dear. There are tank versions of these. Oh, this is going to be bad. I can feel it in my bones. I can feel it in my bones. All right. So, if I had to rank the marksman items, like, top to bottom, I immediately believe, like, this is the best... Am the, the Kraken Slayer is the best damage option by default, just purely because, like, even if... It says free firing marksman. Like I, I'm still of the belief when you have enough attack speed, you're free firing enough to get this, this passive out. And you're going to kill other people in duels no matter what. But if you purely care about, like, surviving damage in the long run... And there, there will always be metas where living longer and dealing more damage will always be the case. And... Now, you might argue about this, but there will there will be a situation where a team will function the standard way and build standard items. Like, say, like Kraken... Like, and, like what's it called? Kraken Slayer will be like a, a standard damage item and they'll build like standard for their thing. But then like they'll verse a team that is purely defensive oriented and they're playing like protect the Cogmore or some shit like that. And they're going to have this item and it's going to be like all these like things that just give extra towards that just to keep the guy alive. And that's where it starts getting a little bit finicky because where exactly do you not want to go when it comes down to the defensive line of items? Because this is where it's going to end up. It's just going to be nasty upon nasty upon nasty when people are just trying to just stack up defensive items and such and just continually try to force feed an AD carry into survival. It's like the reverse big chungus. It's like it's such a dumb idea to just keep force feeding a cat to make it look fat. And they think it's cute because it's on Reddit. Like, haha, it's on Reddit. This is literally the same thing. You're going to literally force feed an AD carry so it so it actually carries. And carries are going to be like, I don't want to carry like this anymore. I want to go back to being a utility. And then like all those really like those galaxy brain AD carries that are like, that think they, they know better every single time. We're like, yeah, fuck yeah. Fucking give me all the resources. I can fucking carry. You know what comes with that? Five man ganks, son. You better start surviving those or I'm going to have to teleport down there and beat your ass too. And I'm on your team. So yeah, we'll figure out where that goes. I'm still, I'm not sold on this item un, uh, purely unless like you're versing five squishies or like you're going to split push. And this is literally like the kind of item that you would want to like deal in that one-on-one -on -one situation. But the mobility it gives is the only reason you might consider this item a thing, right? If you're purely like focused on, on kiting and staying the distance and just dashing away from people and still getting that thing, then sure. But I don't really feel like this in the early game that this item will like provide, sorry, this item won't provide enough in late game to warrant you dashing in ever. It's just, I just can't feel that on any level just with the amount of shit going on. All right. Sunfire Aegis. Oh boy. Ramping damage. All right. Some fire ages turns tanks into dangerous threats to, for enemies who take extended fight. Hold the fucking phone. Sunfire of any version always turn tanks into dangerous threats because damage are, damage levels that tanks deal are huge. This isn't season two anymore where all tanks hit like wet noodles. Like tanks do damage now, and it's scary. And people are worried about that. That's why they want items that actually deal with tanks. And here we are, an item that naturally gives shit towards tanks. All right, so 3200, it's cheaper than a carry item too. Fuck, that's never a good sign. All right, 
Barmy Cinder and Aegis of the Legion at 700 gold. Gives 450 health, 30 armor, 30 magic res, and 15 ability haste. So, I have to figure out the ability haste versus CDR difference. I haven't actually checked it yet. But, as far as I'm aware, it functions the same. It's just sm it's a smoother curve. And, uh, instead of a cap, I believe, I've, I'm led to believe there's diminishing returns. But, I'll have to double check. Anyway. Immolate. Deal 20 to 40 damage based oh with level oh it's based on level and plus one percent bonus health magic damage per second to nearby enemies increased by 50 percent against minions and 200 percent oh god it does extra damage in the jungle oh god oh no 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 damaging champions or epic monsters with this effect adds a stack increasing subsequent immolate damage by 12 percent for five seconds maximum six stacks bro 12 percent I mean, in the short fall, that doesn't seem like a lot, but, I mean, that is going to stack up. Anyway. At maximum immolate stakes, your basic attacks burn nearby enemies for your immolate damage per second for three seconds. Does that stack? On top of the immolate that you're getting? I'm not liking this. Like, you're going to be, like, doling out haymakers with this, with this particular ability, because everything's just going to start, like, burning over, no matter what. I mean, there's definitely, like, a lot of ironed out, like, information about this. Like, this is literally for, if the fight is extended, then a tank that's holding onto this will start maxing out on damage. But that is purely based on how long it stays in combat. And you can stay in combat with anything before a fight starts. Like, that's, that's not difficult. Like, it's literally believing that you're near an enemy, right? Like, you can just stand near the minion way before a fight starts, or just go to, the, like, or just fight the scuttle crap. Like, you can do anything to proc this and once that reaches max stacks like you're, it's not as if like an extended fight is a particularly scary thing because it's going to be up front and it's going to hurt and people are going to be scared and it's going to be <laughs> it's not good that's very scary <laughs> i swear i like i heard people shouting from the rootos that tanks will nerf this season i'm already worried that tanks are going to start taking over i don't know what the hell you all are talking about anyway <laughs> Grants all other legendary items 5 ability haste. Do I have to, like, control F a bit? Oh, no, hang on. Stat updates is next. I'll get to that in a sec. So I'll, when I get to the, the stat update part, I'm going to go back to this point and just rehash what I was saying and tell you just how pissed I am when I get to it. All right. Frostfire Gauntlet. Slow... Oh, God. Here we go. So IBG update. All right. So Frostfire Gauntlet can turn any tank into an inescapable behemoth. They kind of... Uh, uh. All right. You know what? I'm going to try and refrain from reading these out loud because it's giving me a bit of a brain snap every time I do, but we'll get, to, we'll, we'll make it. It's okay. All right. Total cost, 3,200 gold. Barmy Cinder plus ma Null Magic Mantle plus Chain Vest plus 950 gold. Gives you 350 health, 50, 50 armor. So it's an extra armor. It's, a, it's leaning towards the armor plus Magic Resist plus Ability Haste. The Immolate Passive appears to be the same. Snowbind. Basic attacks create a slow zone for 1.5 seconds on a 4 second cooldown. Enemies that move across the zone are slowed by 30% plus 4% per 1000 max health. Plus 4% per 1000 max health. Hmm. So we can easily get to 45% in most cases, or at the very least, you can easily get to, th uh, to 42%. So 42 is like the very easy thing to reach at this point. So you can get a 40% slow on your basic attacks in a field. And I assume that field doesn't change based on armor anymore. So that makes it a little bit easier, but I assume the slow zone is quite large on its own now that it won't scale with armor anymore. So that's good and bad. But keeping them inside your like your slow field and being able to like do more with that is infinitely more awesome because it gives you like great like it gives you great potential to help your teammates kite because you're creating like fields of uh, of snow here. Grants all other legendary items plus 100 health and increases your champion. Oh, this is the one that makes you fit. Makes you very fit. Wait, is it every item you just start growing? How's Cho'Gath going to look by the end of this? <laughs> anyway. But yeah. Extra 100 health per champion, uh, per legendary item. Which infinitely adds to this. Which will, not infinitely, sorry. It will, uh, sh at, bleh, English, please. Let's go. 
will add to your snowbind passive no matter what, so that's good. But, I mean, the good news now is that you don't have to cast an ability to get the snowbind passive, so it's just available to you before a fight starts. You don't have to do any weird shit with abilities or anything like that. You just literally walk up and go, bloop, and it just drops the field. Which, on its own, creates a bit of an issue if you attack a minion in advance, because this isn't like basic attacks create something against... Uh, it's not like it creates something against champions only. Like it's literally against everything. And I won't lie, slowing down a field of minions is actually quite nice on its own because, like, imagine stopping them from getting to your tower that much faster. That's just going to create trouble, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, that's something to look into. But I think on its own, this is a very uh, this is quite the the item that you're looking for here. The good news is that this doesn't actually add any damage. I think this is the one thing that was pissing off a lot of people about uh, about what IBG was doing because it just it was based off of your base like damage and your base damage on tanks is infinitely higher, not infinitely, but it's like it's just hugely higher like by default. So getting that free base uh, that base proc for IBG was huge. This isn't exi it doesn't exist on this. So now it's purely utility related. Though I won't lie, the immolate passive is still strong enough as it is but again this is not as big as it is for sunfire aegis so this now just means that you are purely a peel bot for your um for your carry and it makes it better for you to go into that now it's not as if like and there's like this isn't that doesn't like affect anything like cheap shot or anything like that so it's actually not so bad so this is a good sign this is a good direction to take this in but i i still weep for the fact that like you know you're still going to be an infinitely strong tank as it is Turbo Chem Tank. Hello, Ergot and Scion Mold over here. All right, initiation. For tanks who love starting fights, the Turbo Chem Tank allows them to charge into battle. All right. Barmy Cinder Cloth Armor, Negatron Cloak, 1,000 gold, 350L, 25 armor, 50 magic resist, and 15 ability haste. So every tank item mythic has 15 ability haste on it, right? Does that mean like 15% CDR or something more? I'll figure out in a sec. All right, so the same immolate passive is there. Supercharged. So this is an active. All right, so grant 75% movement speed. So this is Righteous Glory's passive. Yep, uh, not passive. Righteous Glory's active. Once near an enemy or after four seconds, a shockwave is emitted and slows nearby champions in 40. Yeah, this is literally Righteous Glory. So that's great. Grants all other legendary items 5% tenacity and slow. Whoa, hang on a second. Grants all other legendary items 5% tenacity and slow resist. Well, I mean, since you're almost always built Tabi, this would just be a lovely welcome, like, addition. You just, like, it's very hard to stop you getting into the middle of the fight. <laughs> See, now, the one thing they've also done here, right, is that against... So, this is really good against mages, obviously, because you get the uh, the 50 magic res. The other one was really good against bruisers, because you get the 50 armor and you get the ability to slow them down. Because, obviously, a slow field's going to do nothing against, the, like, a mage or an AP assassin or something like that, you know? But against, like, bruisers or other engages, like, this is, like, the big thing to work with there. So, that this these make sense. Like, they have very definable goals for each item, right? Now, it's not, like I said, you can only carry one of these, so that automatically makes things... Uh, better in the long run but if you're like purely bo like focused on locking down a character and you build against this i wonder if these are additive although i doubt it because if they were additive plus like what you get from runes plus like merc treads or something like that this would be like uh, pretty nasty pretty freaking nasty if i do say so myself this is pretty nasty. I still think the I still think the Sunfire Aegis is the one that most tanks are going to go for by default, just because it gives the best stats overall, and plus it gives uh, it gives you the mo the best defensive stats for a tank. And truthfully, for a first item, if you're always rushing a mythic item, you want something that has offensive tastes in it. So this is still something you will look at, and plus this will actually like work. Wait a minute, this says nearby enemies. There's a wait. Does this cleave? Can you hit more than one target with this? I think we have a problem here. I think this item has just become the the lead. Like, how do you how do you figure Shen with this item? I'm already nervous. This is the, uh, <laughs> tanks have a very like yeah yeah. I'm already nervous about this. This is a very strong item. Tanks on their own have, like, pretty solid wave clear early game because most of their abilities, like, do the extra AoE. But that, adding this on, plus everything that comes from Immolate, that... 
You gave every tank mythic Sunfire passive too. Like that's... Ugh. Like the one thing that's always been hateful for a new person is like extra damage sources. Like how many extra things can you take damage from and how many things can you be like aware of right this is this is some shit this is what's going to really carry the carry the problem over is when there are too many damage sources in the universe and you don't know what to itemize against and you have to deal with everything that's coming in that's interesting though i won't lie giving Making it so that you can't get Righteous Glory on any other thing other than a Mythic item, that hurts a little for tanks. Because you wanted that ability, like, on demand, and if you're versing, like, other, like, you know, peel, like, peels here, but you needed, like, something for early game and late game, then you would just be, like, stuck building into Turbo Chem Tank with less armor, more magic resist. That's, hmm... But then again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that Righteous Glory still exists in the game and it's not like they've just like infinitely written it off. It's just like an upgraded version of it, maybe. But we'll see. I'll get there. Duskblade of Drakthar. I'm getting really tired of seeing this item. Because that, now that I know it's a mythic item, it only makes me nervous. <laughs> it says multi-kill. <laughs> okay. With Duskblade, assassins can keep their enemies guessing while wreck... Oh, this is the one that turns you invisible. Oh, it's this one. Okay. So... Also, I don't think this is the right word. Anyway, Invisible Havoc and Team Fight. So this is the one that when you get a kill, it turns you invisible, right? All right, so Serrated Dirt, Caulfield's Warhammer, 1,000 gold, 3,200 gold total, 55 attack damage, 18 lethality, 20 ability haste. So just so I have this right, ability haste didn't exist on any of these lethality items prior. So there's no CDR like existed for that prior, which leads me to believe that this is going to start becoming a thing and AD assassins are going to start getting very annoying in uh, mid game. Not to say that like tanks couldn't like take advantage of this by default anyway. So this is the something that you have to figure out. But I mean, how many times are you going to want to see Z mid versus a set? So set can deal with the Z. <laughs> like, ugh. fuck. Anyway, Attacking a champion deals an additional 100 physical damage and slows them for 99% for 25 seconds on a 15 second cooldown. When a champion that you have damaged in the last 3 seconds dies, this cooldown is refreshed and you become invisible for 1.5 seconds. I don't think making every character into Kha'Zix just because, just because, is a really solid idea, but I mean at least this is counterable by dropping a control ward in the middle of a fight. Like, that's... Uh, at least it'll prompt people to actually remember to carry them with if they see like a like someone that's going to do that. But I mean, this purely relies on uh, purely relies on the enemy getting kills. But uh, even then, it still procs off assists as long as they've damaged the opponent in the last three seconds. Though, funny thing, if you're Zed and you've proc the death mark, does that proc in time for you to get the uh, the, the disappearance? Eh, we'll find out. Anyway, it. I think it's a bit strange that like we're putting in really awkward like invisibility like traits for this. I'm not like I'm not mad at it because like we did kind of need something to go like in the stealthy department. But this is probably the strangest direction they could have taken with it by giving an item lethality, ability, haste, and this passive, and the fact that the other legendary items get five ability haste from that in the beginning. That's a problem on its own especially like i haven't got to the stat updates part yet but i can only assume that when we get to that part it's going to make a lot of sense about just how ability haste is calculated and that is worrying me right now but i i i digress not a particularly scary item but like on its own like Dustblade on its own was always a strong item, so there's no like change to that really. It's really just the invisible passive can make for big snowballs in team fights. But the good news is that the characters that benefit the most from snowball kills in team fights are characters that can't use this item. So I'm not fast. Unless you're gonna tell me, and unless I end up biting my tongue off by the end of this, I don't think Katarina scales well enough off of AD and armor pen to actually warrant getting this item. So I'm very happy that that's not the case. <laughs> but God, that doesn't get, does that not give you like a little nightmare of a of a very strong Katarina randomly going invisible and spinning into people over and over again? 
It hurts me a little. But lucky day, I don't think it'll happen. If it does end up happening, though, please don't blame me for giving the people ideas. I'm sorry. Anyway, the Eclipse. Dueling. Eclipse helps assassins weave in and out of fights and take down tankier opponents in drawn-out encounters. Alright, so... What the fuck is Omnivamp? Don't, don't, don't be telling me that... Just calm down, Rick. It's alright. They're not bringing back Spellvamp. They're not about to make this shit stupid. It's not about to be a thing. Just relax. It's okay. Just quick meditation session. Alright. So, 3,200 gold. Serrated Dirk, Vamp, Scepter, Longsword at 850 gold. Attack damage 55, lethality 18. Omnivamp 10%. Why do I get the feeling that the stat upgrades part is going to trigger me the most of this particular video? Well, if it happens, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> Alright. Effects. Ever-Rising Moon. Hitting a champion with two separate basic attacks or abilities within 1.5 seconds deals an additional 8% maximum health physical damage. Grants you 30% movement speed and a 150 shield. Or 100 for ranged. So if you're a melee, you get 150 plus 40% bonus AD. For ranged, it's 100 plus 30% bonus AD for ranged champions. There is a six second cooldown for me. There is a six second cooldown for melee characters. Whoa, that's rather short. All other legendary items gain 4% armor penetration. Bruh, this item scares me. You've got Omnivamp, you've got a free shield, and this gives armor penetration to everything else. Oh dear. I'm not feeling good about this. Plus, there are characters that exist that actually do build lethality as part of a carry build. So that doesn't make me feel good about this. Fuck. I hope there's an AoE cap for Omnivamp too. Fuck, dude. I'm not feeling good about this item. This is the item that scared me the most so far. Like, the main good news of this is that this only helps, <clears throat> this only helps, uh, physical damage carries, right? But everything else that comes from this doesn't make me feel any better, because the free shielding on a six second cooldown, with the mobility that assassins can get, and, <clears throat> and the fact that there's Omnivamp. If you're a character that has spent... Like, if you're not a tank, you are going to struggle with this. Oof. Alright. I'm nervous about this item. This item makes me nervous. Unless I'm wrong and the actual, like, value, like, of, uh... Of the armor penetration and the Omnivamp is actually shit. This actually makes me nervous. Just because a split pushing character that can build this item and is like good for it will automatically make your team like struggle a lot. Like if this really like and like it's really it's really good choices into tanks because obviously tanks will be tanky by default and getting like a free base armor penetration. Okay, it, I will feel okay about this item if this is not additive. If this stat upgrade is not additive, like, you just, like, and it actually, like, multiplies against your, like, against any other sort of armor pen item you have, unless I'm completely wrong, but there will also, like, there will still be, unless, unless like, Lord Dominic's and, like, Mortal Reminder, etc. are removed from the game, then, okay, like, this on its own kind of makes sense, but... Yeah, that doesn't make me feel any better about this. That's the part that makes me nervous. If that, if this is like multiplicative and it's like, and it runs against having these items in your inventory, then it's not a bad thing and it will be okay. Cause that means you'll only really want for slot efficiency purposes, you'll only want the mythic item and that's not bad, but against like squishies or anyone that's like worried about the extra damage that they will be done, it's going to hurt. 8% physical damage, even, even if it's max health will still hurt, yo. Like, it's almost 10% damage. That's still painful. Taking 10% of your health pool from just being sneezed at by, a, by an assassin still hurts. The other thing that worries me, though, there's no, it doesn't seem like there's no internal cooldown about 
Oh, hang on. No, no. The, this internal cooldown is literally for the entire thing. It's not just for the shield. Okay. You know what? That's not so bad. But still, every six seconds hitting someone for it, like, you could literally do, like, a quick, like, burst poke on somebody, peel out, and then come back within six seconds and do the whole thing again. I'm glad this is already nerfed for ranged characters, because a 12 second cooldown on being able to kite back that much with this on lethality plus Omnivap is fucking scary. And that, I'm glad that it would be, like, if it was any lower, it would be fucking, like, detrimental to deal with in the first place. So I'm glad that that's been taken out. Glad Riot remembered to nip it in the bud in advance, because, you know, we already know how lovely that went with Conqueror. Smile. Ugh. Rune synergies are going to be a bit scary with some of these items, I'll tell you that much. Alright, Prowler's Claw. Assassination. Prowler's Claw lets assassins get up close and personal with their prey, amplifying their damage for one fatal combo. This gives 21 lethality. It's 3200 gold, serrated third core field hammer, and 1000. 55 attack speed, so 55 attack damage, 10 ability haste, 21 lethality. Alright, so dash through the target enemy, dealing 100 plus 30% bonus city physical damage. For the next 3 seconds, you deal 15% increased damage to the target. You know what? No matter who the threat on the enemy team is, if you really hate one person enough to build this item and purely target them in a fight, that would be scary. However, this is the one thing. This does say dash through the target enemy. Now, even with it being a minute cooldown, which means that this doesn't reset at all, with it being a minute cooldown, you are essentially committing to being in the center of the fight as an assassin. So you will never use this in team fights. This is purely a split pushing item, and you will build this into like a duelist laner that will stop you from being a that will stop you from being a good split pushing threat. Now, the big thing about this, right? I'm going to just keep using Zed as an example, right? Because damage multipliers on this character are quite scary as it is, and he's already in a good spot right now to make good use of this. But imagine your ult's on cooldown, and all, and you only need this item to do the job, because you're not going to use them together. You will never use the items together, right? You will be able to literally use your ultimate on its own, and your Prowler's Claw on its own, depending on the range, it won't be particularly terrible, and you'll be able to just carve right through your enemy. And, like, this is the item that gives other, like, legendary items 5 lethality on its own, right? So that, on its own, already gives quite a lot of just... Quite a lot of punch as it is. So it's not like it's going to just, like, something you just, like, scoff at. But the scary part is that for a character that can get in and out of fights constantly... You can literally take down one person over and over again, or at the very least, make them spend all the shit to get away from you, and they'll see you still pushing, and they'll come back, try to fight you, think, oh yeah, I can deal with it this time, because he doesn't have anything, and then you literally lose your, use your entire combo again, but with the, with the sand swipe instead of the, instead of your ulti, that's like a death mark on its own. That's still something scary on its own, like this is a duelist, this is a very duelist friendly thing. But like I said, you will never use this in team fights unless you actually find a way to get ahead of like being engaged upon because literally spending your dash to get into a fight over the top of somebody, you will get murdered. Absolutely murdered. So that's not so bad. All right. Oh no, this is the one I'm going to hate. I know I'm going to hate this. I know I'm going to hate this item. I can feel it in my bones. I know I'm going to hate this item. All right. Leandri's Anguish, the anti-tank item. Leandri's Anguish allows me to burn through health and resistances and resistances and excel in longer fights. So this is a Lost Chapter Fiendus Codex and 1200 gold. Total cost 3400. Ability power 80. Mana, mana 600. <laughs> okay. And then ability haste 20. So dealing damage with abilities causes enemies to burn for 15 plus 2.5 percent AP plus oh sorry oh plus one percent okay so there's a base there's a small base amount and a one percent amount okay wait 15 plus one am I misreading this? No, 15 is just the flat. And then... 
No, wait. It is fifth. It is technically sixteen, right? You get one percent for free from the item. It's fifteen percent by default, and then you get two point five percent AP. Hang on. Let me just calculate something in my head. And by in my head, I mean with my trusty calculator that y'all can't see on the screen. <clears throat> so, say you have 500 AP, right? And that's by two, and we'll do that by 2.5%. Where's my percent button? And then, oh wait, I did this the wrong way. Hang on. Ah, I did this the wrong way. Give me a sec. So, we'll do 500. Well, yeah, we'll, just, we'll use 500 as a, uh, as a thing there, right? Does that mean you get an extra 25%? Like divided by 100 times 2.5. No, wait, hang on. 12.5. You get 12.5, which means you get what? You, that means you get like up to 27% of that. No way this is, a, this is a thing, right? Like I'm not, I'm, I, please tell me I'm misreading this and that is just a base amount of damage. Which means you get like what? No, no. The way that's written, it means it would be, hmm. I feel like I should be like looking looking this up, but if I feel like if I do this, I'm just going to like get stuck on this route for a while. But the so just so I have this wait, hang on. I'm sure it's on the wiki. Let me just double check it. It's always written better on the wiki. Let me just give let me just triple check. Cause I owe y'all to this. To to give you like the best details possible. Now Oh right, they've updated all the icons. Oh crap, what do they look like now? Hang on. Mythic items. What item is this again? Leandri's Anguish. All right. Hang on a sec. Causes them to take 60 plus 10% AP plus 4% of the target's maximum health magic damage over 4 sec. This is not the correct. This is not it. I feel like this is a different. I don't think this is actually. Uh, I don't think this is uh, updated on the wiki. 60 plus 10 AP plus 4% of the target's maximum health. Unless, like, the value has been updated in-game. I don't really have the strength to go in and look at it right now. It's very scary on its own. I think the odd thing about this is that if this is a base value and it's only a base value, then it's not so bad. But if this is actually a percent stacking value and you get the extra amount from that on its own, then this is actually going to hurt quite a lot. And characters like Anivia, who can like take the best of uh, the mana pool from this, is actually not a particularly terrible thing. But like any particular mage that wants to poke from this and just like whittle down any sort of bruiser enemy would be like able to do this without too much trouble. But like the item on its own already does quite a lot of damage, assuming this is the high amount. If it's not, then this is only good against tanks, and the ma the magic penetration will be worthwhile overall. But yeah. I'll have to see this one for myself. I'm of the belief that, at the very least, the burn amount should be up to, like, 15% total. Because it's a burn, and it should take time to, like, actually go down. There's no base value to it. It won't, like, instantaneously take away from health. Unless you're literally going to hit them, and it does that amount. Yeah. It's, no, it's for four seconds, right? So you would burn roughly up to a quarter of your health instantaneously in four seconds. That makes sense. Now it says here, a single instance of magic damage will only increase the magic resistance ignorance, ignorance by 20% rather than the full 25, which means you can't actually like get it up to that amount because the timing doesn't make it, obviously. But on its own, if you continue to cast items on them and prolong that timer, then yeah, not really an issue here. I'm just really curious about the burn amount. If the burn amount is incorrect, as it's written here compared to what it's written on the, on the wiki. If it's the amount that's written on the wiki, the wiki says 60 damage plus 10% AP plus 4% of the target's maximum health, magic damage over four seconds. This says 15 flat plus 2.5% AP 
plus 1% max health, magic damage per second over 4 seconds. So these are two very different values. But one of them, the one on the other page leads me to believe that it is purely just an amount that... Oh no, hang on, I get it now. I get it now. This is not... I, I just have to multiply this because this is per second for 4 seconds. Right. This is really poorly written and I would never recommend anyone to read this ever again. As you can see, the caffeine is setting in now, and I've actually realized a little faster that this is just multiply it by four. Let's do this correctly, then. Say I have 500 AP. That's not a 500. Hang on. I am an idiot. Give me a sec. So say I have 500 AP. So that adds 50 on its own. So you do 110 damage, right? Per second plus the 4% of the target's maximum health. So say the target has 2,000. It will do... Let's see. I'm just going to add this up. Hang on. So 2,000... Does roughly 80. It's about 190. And then if you keep hitting them with it, it will continually burn for roughly 200 damage plus added magic i mean i'm not going to factor in the magic resistance and magic pen but that is an that is a 200 damage dot over four seconds that you will be able to continuously restack on a target if i if i weigh it up against what it used to be before then this is not particularly far off difference wise but given that if this is a mythic item, it does have a little bit more punch uh, in regards to the amount of... Uh, res uh, the amount of thing that it gives. The amount... Oh, come on. Brain, work for me. The, the amount of damage that it deals overall. But the difference is you don't get the actual... Uh, the stacking 10%... Sorry, you don't get the 10% um, increased damage. And that was probably the most busted thing about Leandri's Torment originally. So, yeah. The burn itself is going to be huge. But the big thing that was fucking with a lot of people the most was the fact that you literally got the 10% magic damage buff. And that was crazy. So that was probably the biggest thing that needed to go. And I'm glad that that's gone. So that makes this item, like, usable, doable, etc. So that's good. I don't feel so, like, let down by the process when I think about this item anymore. Because, like I said, an item that gave a damage boost plus a... Um, plus the burn on an enemy was automatically something scary. And then, yeah, if it had anything more to work from that, it was just problematic. So this doesn't factor in CC anymore, but it about that, which means it works on basically anyone by default. And the burn damage as it is, is quite strong. So if we're purely basing it on just how much upfront damage it would have done, this is huge. The bigger difference though is Wait a minute. This isn't capped against monsters. Now I'm nervous. This isn't capped against monsters. This and there's nothing in this tooltip that tells me that this is actually anything different against monsters. Fuck. That's not good. Okay. That makes me nervous. All right. Luden's Tempest, burst damage. Oh god, this is the, this is one of the ones I was worried about. I heard Luden's was being made into a mythic item, and I thought, oh, I wonder how much damage it's going to do. Zoinks. All right, so I'm going to bring up their removed components on my other screen just to double check it because I'm actually like, I, I'm I'm going to be real with you. I'm really nervous about the way that like this is going to be ironed out just purely because of how. It can get nutty. Like, it can get really fucking nutty if you really compare the difference. But anyway, Luden's Tempest. 3,400 gold. Lost chapter plus blasting one plus 1,250 gold. Gives ma ability power 80. Magic penetration 10. Magic penetration 10. Huh. Huh. Okay. 
And then 600 mana and 10 ability. This is quite a front-loaded item. Sweet Christ. And he gives magic pen to other... Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh dear. Oh, something hurts a little. Oh, that hurt a little internally. Okay. Okay. All right. So damaging abilities will deal an additional 100 plus 15% AP magic damage to the target and three nearby enemies and grant you 30% movement speed for two seconds on a 10, se on a 10 second cooldown. <laughs> so there's no, no charges to be gained there, which is a good sign because the flat cooldown will definitely help you in the late game because y'all know everyone was going to fuck around with this late game. You know it. You know it. So that was a scary thought, but that's that's a thing that's uh, been sorted out. Now, if I'm to assume it's 600 range as well, then that's still really good wave clear as it is. Um, yeah, the ability haste plus magic penetration on one item is a bit scary. Let's see. Uh, Damage-wise, I believe this is the exact same. No, wait, no. It's almost the same. It's the same base damage, but it deals 5% extra in this in the ratio so it will do a little bit more later game this is not the scariest thing but the magic penetration makes me nervous putting a magic penetration on it on an item like this like i understand you can only have one so it's not so bad but how many other magic penetration items are going to exist now i'm nervous can you see it in my eyes i'm nervous now I'm sure you all are aware of this. You all know about my gripes that exist about AP characters in this game and how they're just too good. A lot of it comes from itemization. We're here again. We have items that are just fucking amazing in the slot for some AP characters, right? Giving Luden's Echo a, a new paint job whilst giving it slightly less AP but more magic penetration still makes it hurt more in the early game. That's crazy. Now, it doesn't say anything about the bounce granting vision like it, like it does on the original item, but I don't think that's a big change generally. However, just as a note though, like the fact that this is on a flat cooldown, it doesn't scale in any way, it doesn't rely on you getting up charges, is both good and bad depending on the t on the like the state of the game. It's great early game because if you're just standing still for the majority of time and trying to be like like easy on yourself that's not a bad thing but if it's late game where like you would have infinitely like got more charges out of i'd say charges as if it was a thing but getting more use out of luden's echoes uh like effect by default would have always been something to work with but yeah not too bad not too good magic penetration makes me nervous i'll worry about that with the rest of the stats and the other items included in a sec and don't worry, you will get my synergistic ideas at the end of this. You are ready. You aren't ready for this shit, chat. You aren't. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. All right, Everfrost, slow enemies. With Everfrost, mages can control the battlefield and lock down their opponents in ice. This is especially useful for disengaging. Oh, this is the GLP passive. Okay, I mean active. Uh, this is literally GLP, but stronger. Okay, so Lost Chapter Blasting 1, 1250 gold, plus is 30, yeah, 3400 total, 80 ability power, 200 health, 600 mana, and 10% ability haste. I keep saying 10% like it's a thing, but 10 ability haste. And then yeah, you get Glaciate, which is deal 100 plus 30% AP magic damage in a current, slowing enemies by 65%. Enemies at the center of cone are rooted. Are rooted. Oh, wait, this is a cone. It's not like a shitty fan of shit because i really hated that it never did what you wanted it to do <laughs> it never it never worked as well as you would have liked it to i can tell you that much but yes glp is gone and replaced by this oh no hang on no this is uh, it's technically okay just so i have this right this says it's in a cone the old glp said it was in a cone too but it doesn't say anything about spraying icy bolts in a cone which leads me to believe it's like annie's fire thing now if i'm completely wrong then this tooltip sucks right fix it um yeah, enemies at the center of a cone are rooted so obviously in the center of it like they will be immediately just rooted in place which makes it lovely and grants all other legendary items 15 ability power so i'm not mad about the direction of this item now, if Glacial Augment still exists, then on its own, it's quite scary. But the big thing that scares me the most is the cooldown. This is a 20 second cooldown, as opposed to the old GLP, which was 40 seconds. That's scary. 
for disengage primarily, and like if you put it in with like the other thing about like having a defensive AD carry build, this is a scary thought. Like you have a lot of like really good disengage tools here, right? The other thing that bugs me is that having an ability that you can cast off cooldown when you want to, as opposed to Luden's Tempest, where it just builds up after 10 seconds and just gets used. I sometimes think that people will take the hit just for that if they're a scaling, like, defensive artillery type mage. They will take the hit just to purely have that on demand. I can feel that. I can really vibe with that. But yeah, the slow on its own is exactly the same as GLP was, but it's half the cooldown. The damage is the same, but it has this AP scaling rather than a level scaling. And the, the AP scaling is higher than what it was on GLP as well, so that automatically makes the difference on its own. But, huh, huh, hmm, very, very scary. Very many scary. I, like, I sense characters like Oriana, Karma, those kinds of characters that have, like, all this utility will like this item. Plus, they like, have the ability to self-peel this hard. It's quite scary. Plus, yeah, it gives 200 health and 600 mana. Uh, <laughs> the other thing as well is that, like, imagine if you're, like, a bruiser, an uh, AP bruiser, and you build this item. Like, hmm. Is Rod of Ages still in the game? No, it's not. Okay, so there's... Ooh, hmm, 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 hmm. I'm sure there's something to fix that one up for me. Anyway, Hextech Rocket Belt. So this is obviously Proto Belt, but different. Uh, Rocket Belt gives shorter range mages a way to blast onto the scene and get in range and destroy an enemy champion. So Hextech Alternator Ruby Crystal Blasting 1 at 900 gold for 3200 total. 80 ability power, 250 health, and ability, ha ability haste 15. I've really got to get to the stat updates part and figure this out because I'm nervous about what ability haste gives generally. If I'm if I'm to believe it's literally just number to number, but the cap is different or it has diminishing returns, as I as I as I believe I heard originally, then not so bad. But still nervous, still freaking nervous. Um, anyway, dash your target direction, unleashing an arc of magic missiles. It's literally the exact same thing as what it was before, but the damage is much higher. So it used to be 75 to 50 magic damage plus 25% AP. It is now 200 to 300 magic damage plus 15% AP. You also gain movement speed after the fact, which you didn't before, which is cool. And it's still on a 40 second cooldown, which is exactly the same as it was before. Now, this also grants magic penetration across the board but with no base magic penetration. So this is still good if you're like, you know, you're cannon or you're something like that and you want something to actually work for that. That's cool. I totally dig it. Um, for me personally, I feel like uh, Mordekaiser would really like this item. Just because the burst is there and the extra damage on top of that is actually quite useful. And that really gives you like some really good vibes for that. Um, I'm led to believe that Rylai's is still in the game. So having that as an like something to use on top of everything else is quite scary, and like being able to use the both. So I feel like Mordekaiser has got quite happy about this because uh, an an updated version of Proto Belt. Now the big thing before right, and this is probably the only like kicker here right, is Hextech Proto Belt originally was twenty five hundred gold. This is three thousand two hundred right. Now for the stats it gives and for the AP it gives, it's twenty extra AP. And if we're to believe that cooldown reduction and ability haste are literally one for one, then you get 5% extra cooldown reduction, but you get less health. Now, the good news is that this is actually, and this is what it should be. It's an aggressive item. It should be. So you shouldn't get that much health in the first place, but it gives you something to work with in the middle of a fight. So that's good. That's good. The big difference though, I haven't checked the alternator yet, but I, my assumption is that the curve for this item is not as bad as it was before because Hextech Revolver was a stupid item. It was a really stupid item. It gave way too much for way too little cost, and it was scary to work with, right? So if we're assuming that that is where you're going to go with this, then this item is probably one of the better balanced items in the in the thing here. But for a character, like for characters like Mordekaiser or like you know Juggernaut esque, -esque bruises that will want to run with this, this is a good choice, purely because. The damage that is given from that short amount as well is huge. 
The comboing potential of this is great. And it is still on a 40 second cooldown. So even then it makes wave clear even easier. So all use is available. Oh, not Omnivamp again. All right. I'm getting really nervous about what Omnivamp is going to entail. Hold me. <laughs> All right. Riftmaker, Omnivamp. So mages and tanky and magic damage dealers can dominate fights that go along with ramping damage in here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. So, Leeching Leer. Wait, there is an Omnivamp small item? Okay. Plus Blasting Wand, plus 1,050 gold, gives 80 ability power, 150 health, 15 ability haste, and 15% Omnivamp. So there's more Omnivamp on AP items than AD items again. Why am I not surprised about this? Rito, we need to have a chat about how much love you give to AP characters. All right. Now, for each second in champion combat, champion combat, by the way, the other one wasn't listed as champion combat for the Sunfire. This one is champion combat. Deal 3% bonus damage, max 15% damage. At maximum strength, this bonus damage delta <laughs> That's scary. Okay. So 50% bonus troops. So this is literally the old Conqueror passive. Huh. Okay. All right. Plus Omnivamp. I have some very bad news for you. If you don't like Vladimir as a character, or if you don't like literally anyone that's capable of excelling with Omnivamp, this is going to be the first thing you, you should be scared of. Omnivamp in general was a scary concept. For those that remember, like, Spellvamp ages ago, and how, like, crazy Spellvamp was, the good news is that, at least for the cost of the slot, it is quite heavy. But if there are other items that give Omnivamp on top of the mythic items, we're going to have a big problem. Especially, like, we already are aware of how bad Ravenous Hunter was, right? Like, that scared people as it was because of the amount that it gave. But if you give Omnivamp something that actually, like, works into it, and there's another item that goes alongside it, this is going to be a problem. The Riftmaker on its own will actually give quite a quite a lot of sustain generally, meaning that dueling in general will be a problem. Now, I do understand, and I have heard that there is there are cheaper options for Grievous Wounds in this game, but being pigeonholed into having to buy that every single time when the things like omnivamp exists plus if omnivamp like reaches higher like values by default and works off of minions there's no like nothing that can really stop you in that regard early on so it's both good and bad if you are thinking about like the way your character like develops uh scales engages that sort of stuff but, like, obviously I think of Vladimir first and foremost because he was, like, the quintessential vamp character. And he's always, like, function in that regard. But if you're a an AP character that can make the best use of this, or we think about the AD version that has the 10% Omnivamp on it, that's still a scary process, as it is. So, get to the rest of that in a sec. But that is making me very nervous. Anyway, Night Harvester, multi-kill. All right. Night Officer is a great tool for magic damage dealing assassins and bruisers who want to work their way through the entire enemy team rather than taking out one target then bouncing out of the fight. So this is 3200 gold, it takes an alternator, ruby crystal, blasting one, 900 gold, ability power 80, health to 50, ability haste 15. Damaging a champion deals an additional 175 to 250 magic damage plus 15% AP of it and grants you 25% movement speed for 1.5 seconds, 60 second cooldown per enemy. So this is Storm Raider's Surge, but with a big cooldown that doesn't reset, but the extra damage it deals generally is interesting. So you will only do, oh, hang on. Does the cooldown... Wait, the cooldown is based on the enemy, right? Which means that they will have a debuff cooldown and you won't have a buff cooldown. Which means that you can literally hit this many enemies at its... Wait. No. Wait. No, I'm really thinking about this. Right? Hang on, I'm going to look at this on the wiki and just be doubly sure. Because... 
So in my head, right, and this is the thing that like that probably makes the most sense, but probably is the most confusing thing at the same time. Is this it? All right, Night Harvester. What I'm led to understand, right, is that as long as you hit a target with this, you will get the the bonus damage on them, right? Additionally, you can keep procking it on everyone else in the fight, and that will give you quite a lot of movement speed by default. Now, what I'm led to believe is that if you just hit a person with a with a damaging something, it's just as damaging, it doesn't have an ability, you just hit them, they will take an additional 175 damage by default, right? That on its own is value. Being able to do that every minute, that's a bit of a, that's a, bit of a step, right? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. If we wait, nah, ability haste doesn't affect items, right? Just, just, in, I'm, I'm sure it won't. But if I get to that, and that actually is the case, oh boy. All right. But yes, the point, the point that I want to make, right, is on its own, this does quite good damage. However, if you're an AOE mage, you will immediately lose out on the on the movement speed passive because you can't just keep it rolling, right? But um, see, between this and the Hextech Proto Belt item, there are choices that you can somewhat make that might make the difference in what you're planning to do in team fights. But like in a skirmish, right? Hitting one target for an extra 200 damage by default is huge. And then on top of that, if you change to another target and hit him for that same amount, it still hurts and you still get all of that movement speed. That's still something to consider overall. I feel like there are some things that you can test with that that will work out. But the other thing is that I feel like Night Harvester is somewhat overshadowed by other items just purely because the cooldown is quite high. Although for some reason, I look at this item in the wiki and it's already at 40 seconds instead of 60. This says 60. In the wiki, it says 40. So is it 40 or 60? If it's 40, then it's actually quite good. I'm wondering how many hotfix changes have come in since I've started doing this video or if they're happening literally in the process or if the wiki is just failing miserably with actually like reading patch notes. We'll find out. Anyway. <clears throat> get ability haste on everything else that's all right all right trinity force this is the ugliest icon who designed this like on its own it seems fine i don't know i feel like this could have been done way better i'm not i'm not a fan <laughs> i'm not a fan of the icon i'm sorry <laughs> anyway all right so sheen still exists hearthbound axe and kindle gem I feel like we've lost like the stinger and everything else here. We're not really combining like everything in the rainbow. The cost is still the same though. Three, 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 three gold. Health 200, attack damage 35, attack speed 35%, ability haste 10. Threefold strike. Basic attacks grant 25 movement speed for three seconds. If the target is a champion, increase your base attack damage by 6%, stacking up to five times, max 30%. After using an ability, your next basic attack is enhanced and will deal 200% base attack damage, etc. Wait. That says additional. Does that mean that your ramp up plus that, that is actually... No. Nah. I mean, I feel like some bursty characters are going to enjoy this by default, but. Allow fighters to take over long fights with ramping attack damage and repeated bursts of spellblade procs. See, the problem with this item has always been the repeated bursts of spellblade procs, right? That's always been a, an issue, right? But if you get, like, you always get the rage passive, the movement speed, that's always been fine. But it says, if the target is a champion, increase your base attack damage by 6%. Stacking up to five times, so max 30%. So 30%, let's just say your base attack damage is like 100 at like mid, at mid late, which is what it is for most characters that, that build this item. You will get roughly another 30 base AD by default. 
And then it's actually possible that your next basic attack will be enhanced for 200% base attack damage. Why does that seem scary to me? Why do I feel like Irelia is going to enjoy this item? Plus, yeah, it gives all your other legendary items 10% attack speed. So this is so this is the gamble that Riot have put down on this. They've just decided, you know what? We really want this to synergize with other other uh, like items that use X amount of attack speed. Let's like, yeah, we're going to put the chips down for this. And we want to make sure that everyone's working with it and blah, 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 etc. And that's where they're going to end up, right? That's what they're aiming for. I totally get it. I really do, right? It makes me nervous purely because, right? Purely because the synergistic properties of attack speed, right, are huge. They were always going to be huge. But the obvious like drawback is the the big the big loss that you get is that you don't obviously get any other stats, right? There are no like stats generally that keep you alive or keep you like in a good nick of things. So you are essentially a glass cannon and thought, okay, that's where we're at. So glass cannon as a, as a concept is good and bad, but obviously we're looking at bruises and like carry style top laners that would be wanting to build this item. And then you want synergistic ideas that go in with attack speed. So alongside Triforce, it really depends on what items have been added and removed here. But if I'm to just spitball, and say that, like, I assume most of the attack speed items haven't been removed. So you look at items like, you know, Wits End or stuff like that. If they're not removed, then you automatically have a good case for specific uh, items that do these things and how well they work together. That's something that you should be considering, right? That's the, the diff. That's the diff. So... If we can, if we can figure out like just how much more or less like that that synergistic property works, then this item becomes very useful on top of the spell blade passive that it has already, which is already quite scary. But that's 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 a consideration you have to look at. Gore Drinker, what a great name! Survive burst. So fighters can come back from the brink of death with a well timed thirsting slash heal and increase attack damage while injured. Nunny. All right. So iron spike whip. A whip, we have a whip. A fade. Oh, fade is still in the game, but it's not included in Triforce. How interesting. All right. Oh, wait. Did Triforce have health? It did have health. Why is fade not? You know what? I'll figure that out later. Anyway. Um, yeah, so this gives fade Kindle Gem at 200 gold. This gives four, 400 health, 45 attack damage, 150, 150% health regen, and 20 ability haste. What? Wait, this is Olaf. What? Wait, what? Hey, who? Hey, who? Hmm. Thirsting slash. Deal 100%, 110% of your attack damage to nearby enemies. Restore health equal to 20% of your attack damage plus 12% of your missing health for each champion hit. It's a 15 second cooldown and it is affected by ability haste. Gain 1% attack damage for each 5% of your missing health. Maximum 15% AD. Ah, uh, whoa, huh? Grants all legendary items five ability aced. Okay, bud. So let's assume for a hot second. Let's assume for a hot second that even if you're not a duelist and you don't care about like top lane split pushing skirmishes, etc. Do I assume that they have taken out like the Hydra items to make up for this? Or have they at least redesigned them so that, that none of the synergistic properties exist? I assume so. And that's not a bad thing. But what the ever-living shit? How... <sighs> gaining an extra 15% AD for how much lower you can be. The fact that this is affected by ability haste makes me nervous. But... The good news is that you will always, so you will always get 20% of your attack damage health back by default. There is a big health regen component included by default, but you get extra health back for each champion hit. 
I'm very nervous about this item, especially in a solo queue setting. I feel like there is not a lot that a lot of people can do to deal with this if they're not properly holding down their opponent with CC. That makes me nervous. Characters that have synergistic properties with this already, I'm thinking of Olaf, right? Like, I'm a big Olaf fan as it is. But, like, you you bring this item in for a character like Olaf, who, like, and characters that, like, live off of drain tanking, right? Like, even like, uh, Aatrox would, like, would benefit from this as well. Like, characters, like, that could really make good use of this with their own, like, built-in regen and their own ability to actually work with this. I just realized this item is based off of that Van Damme Pillager from, uh, from Twisted Tree Line. It's an updated icon from that. <laughs> anyway, like, this sort of thing makes me nervous just because, like, you've literally taken all the best bruiser stats and put them into one item, including, like, you've got high health amount, you've got a health regeneration amount, you've got ability haste, and the attack damage is just a bonus, right? That on its own, plus everything that you deal there on its own is huge. So you will deal what is essentially, say you have 150 attack damage, right? You'll deal roughly, I oh know, even more than that at that point. You might even have up to 200 attack damage, right? You will deal 220, roughly, attack damage to nearby enemies, right? You will get 20% of your attack damage back, so you'll get not a lot back. But you'll get 12% of your missing health back if you hit a champion. Then, that, as I said, is a 15 second cooldown, but it is affected by ability haste, and everything that you get gives ability haste. So this is a 20 ability haste on the item, 5 ability haste per item that you have available. So, I'm going to get to the stat upgrade soon, and when I figure this out, I'm going to go back and just double check just how fucked ability haste is here. Because I'm getting nervous about the amount of gain that people are going to get from ability haste. Alright, stride breaker, that sounds cool. There's no escaping a fighter wielding the Stride Breaker. All right, bud, we'll put that to the test. So this is an engagey item. Iron Spike Whip, Halfbound Axe, Kindle Gem, and 200 Gold. 300 Health, 50 Attack Damage, 20 Attack Speed, and Ability Haste 10. Halting Slash, lunge a short distance and deal 110% of your attack damage to nearby, enemy, nearby enemies. Slowing them by 60%. Ooh. 20%. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. 20 second cooldown affected by ability haste. Why? Oh, I'm so nervous about this. And you get the free movement speed on everything else. Dealing physical damage grants 30 movement speed decay for those. Okay, look, the good news, right, is this doesn't give a whole lot generally, but there is good purposes for this item. But there's no, de there's no extra damage ramp up and there's no defensive stat capability apart from the health, right? You don't get as much ability haste compared to the Gore Drinker. So if you're a juggernaut, you might look at Stride Breaker and think this is a good idea, but truthfully, you just want to be like a powerhouse. And I don't think this item can really make up the difference for that. However, the 60% slow is something interesting. And like having a Proto Belt-esque like engage tool, again, this is only, it's only short distance though, so it's not great. But if you're already glued to your target and want to keep like pressuring them out from this, you will force flash from this item, no problem at all. But again, I don't think this item gives enough. Maybe I'm really iffy on like, or maybe I'm like really harsh on like how attack speed items work, and especially in regards to mythic items. But I'm really just not sold on the fact that an item that gives you a short dash, that gives you movement speed on everything else, is worth the slot since you can only have one. I don't think it's worth the slot compared to like the the gold efficiency of things like ability haste or penetration or even attack speed, right? On its own, if you purely had to like think about what the item gave you, then yes, the movement speed is huge because movement speed as a slot item is always worth a lot of gold efficiently because it's it's too hard to itemize for. But if you're purely thinking about what it actually does, like what in a practical setting it does, right? Like as much as everyone bats on about item efficiency and so on and so forth, that's not worth a damn at all. It's not. So I can't see that being a, a good idea. So this probably isn't the greatest item of the bunch. We'll leave it there. Divine Sundara, the anti-tank item. This looks cool as hell. Your health, my health. This item allows fighters to steal chunks of the steal chunks of their opponent's health with spellblade and shoot. What? How 
Hang on. Phage Sync, Kindle Gem, 700 gold, 40 health, 400 health, 40 attack damage. Okay. Okay, bud. After using an ability, your next basic attack is enhanced with an additional 10... 10% target max health physical damage on a 1.5 second cooldown. If the target is a champion, restore 50% of the damage amount, 30% for ranged users. Holy batshit. This is cool. Alright. So, hybrid characters and bruisers that have spammable cooldowns are going to really like this. Cool. But again, like this is the other thing, right? Even as an anti-tank item, it's good, right? But the fact that this does 10% of uh, max health physical damage as a spell blade. Like, Spellblade on its own was literally only meant to do base damage because of how spammable it was. But on a 1.5 second cooldown, characters with spammable thingos will just start chunking people. If you get affected by this at any stage of, like, there's a reason that the attack damage stat is so low on this, but, like, ability haste as it is, giving you the ability to get, like, into these fights like this, this is scary, bro. Fuck. I'm actually really nervous about this item. But, funnily enough, I'm not, I'm not scared about it being on a bruiser. I'm actually just as scared about this item being on a tank. <laughs> like... If you can't find justifications to use uh, divine, like the the Sunfire Aegis, then you have a Divine Sunderer to really like ramp up the amount of damage you're doing by default, and it gives you like really good uses for your items. Actually, now that I think about it, when I go back to uh, when I go back to the tank items, right, I look at these and I'm really glad that like the only tank stat these this thing gives is health. If it gave any actual, like, stats as it was, these items would be OP as shit, right? But the fact that a tank item gave ability haste on its own was a good, like, de offensive stat to add to it. But if you can, if you want to weigh up just how much damage you can do as a bruiser tank, or like Mundo, right? When you have spammable abilities that can chunk out, plus all you care about is, like, getting your stats from other items... This is where, like, items like Divine Sunderer are not just anti-tank items anymore. Like, these are max health damage items, right? So they hurt, as it is. Like, 10% health of a 2,000 health character is still a lot. Of a 5,000 health character, yes, it seems bigger and it gives you more from it, but that's still something that, like, works out in your favor damage-wise. If you scrap the utility altogether, then... Like, the damage amounts that it gives are huge. Now, if you care about the utility, then against anyone over 2,500 health, this automatically starts to really make you nervous. Plus, you get the armor penetration and magic penetration by default. Like, you get both of these from this. And, like, putting attack damage on a character like, you know, like on a tank or on, like, a character like Silas, even, it's not a particularly big loss, but getting, like, a getting all that extra like penetration from something else like how many hybrid characters actually you know what this is the this is my 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 interesting thought how many characters right how many characters would actually benefit the most from the hybrid components of this item right i can immediately think of maybe two or three and like Volibear is like an, a character I think of. Warwick would be an interesting one. Uh, tanks uh, on their own are pretty interesting. Gragas would be an interesting thought because he does still do some sort of like bruisery style damage. These are characters, right, that have the ability to be hybrids and still do like considerable damage, right? But you never had to care about how much extra like the ability like costs or anything worked into it because you never really cared about building extra for him. But say you're Udyr. Say you do both versions of damage. Say you're just capable of getting that extra amount of chunk out. These items start becoming really interesting for you. Skarna probably is the biggest, like, well, probably one of the bigger ones that will get the biggest benefit from this. Because he's tanky by default. The items will benefit that. And he will be able to stick to a target like no one's business. Like, there's just nothing that will stop him from doing that. So, when you have all of these choices in mind... A tanky character can really fucking make good on this if they have great base stats. But a bruiser can take into, like, the tank tree 
and really start like getting beefed up on its own because they still have really good choices to work with. So that doesn't say to me that like, oh, this is a really good balancing change. It really makes me worry just how many like combinations are going to exist in the game that make it, I won't say make it hard to just evaluate over and over again, but I, I actually like worry that there will always be something that's more broken than something else. And that will get in the way of properly building up gameplay, you know? Uh. All right, Shirelia's battle song. All right, so we've gone away from the tanky and top lane items. Now we're on to support items, are we? Team mobility. All right, so Shirelia's lets support players orchestrate flawless quintets by boosting allies' movement and damage. And damage? All right. Kindle gem, fairy charm, winged moon plate. Winged moon plate. And then 350 health, ability, haste, 20 movement speed. Mm -hmm. Even on its own, this gives good shit. No, no, no damage. Okay, the good news is there's no damage or AP featured in this anymore, which automatically dissuades it from being a good carry item. Thank God. All right, so grants new and nearby allies 40% decaying movement speed for four seconds and an additional 40 to 60 magic damage on the next three basic attacks or ability hits against champions on a 90 second cooldown. On three? Not so huge. Honestly, if it like gave it you it for a specific amount of time rather than just on the next three basic attacks or three ability hits might be like a big difference there. But I wouldn't say this is anything that really says, oh, this is fucking crazy. Please like get me out. Like if anything, this is uh, quite, quite flat compared to everything else that we've uh, encountered so far. Truthfully, if we compare it to everything else that we have encountered so far, this is a, like, this is a something that you would really worry about. Yes, I'm aware I've gotten up, but I need to turn my fan up a little bit because it's quite hot here. All right. Yeah, so as a thought process, like, you really got to consider, considering, like, how much everyone else, uh, every other, like, item pool has been, like, affected so far, this isn't huge. It's nice that, like, there is a consideration there, but when you factor in the costs... I, I think factoring in the cost is something to really think about here. It's good that, like, you can't get immense amounts from this. But, yeah, I feel like there is something... Something's missing from this. Now, if we assume they all have 20 ability... Okay, they do. So, they're all the same cost and they all have 20 ability haste. So, you're really weighing up, like, what each, like, item gives. So, Locker to the Iron Solari. Kindle Gem Maiden is the Legion 400 gold. 200 health, 20 ability haste, 30 armor, 30 magic resist... Grants nearby allies 250 to 420 shield, decaying over 2.5 seconds on a 90 second cooldown. Now, let's just be honest, right? If your aim is to purely, like, look for the slot, because these are still mythic items, so there are, you can only have one, remember. You would still be... Yeah. Grants nearby allied champions, five armor and magic resist. That wasn't on the other one, was it? No. And then mythic, the mythic fa the factor of this, it grants all legendary items an extra two armor and magic resist increase to consecrate. So you literally keep bu buffing the uh, uh, the aura that you give off during, uh, during the game as you get more items. Now, I don't know if uh, legendary items are going to be like that easy to get for a support, but I mean, any, any little stat increase is, is worthwhile. And it helps the efficiency of the item slot. So I'm not feeling too great about the first one very much, unfortunately, unless like, you know, you really need that engagement tool, but it's a big sacrifice. All right. Moonstone Renewer. Dish out constant hills that ramp up. Oh no, not like this. All right. So yeah, we're still on the, on the thing that all support item mythics grant 20 ability haste. 
I got 200 health. This great. Oh, this one grants ability power. Great. Lovely. Oh, great. And 100% mana regen. So when affecting champions with basic attacks or abilities in combat, restore 30 to 60 health to the most wounded nearby ally on a two second cooldown. Each second spent in combat with champions increases the healing effect by 37.5% up to a maximum of 150%. And it grants all legendary items 50 ability. So this is probably the strongest one so far. Assuming that fights will last long enough. So between this and Locket, you really have to evaluate, does the enemy assassin fuck me enough? Or if not, if I need to live over time, then you will always give something out to heal for here. So the good news is that enchanters now have something much more like, much more to work with. But I think the thing that worries me, right, is that just constantly dishing out healing when you're already a healing character makes me nervous. Like, say you're, say you're Sorica. And you know exactly what this character does. And you get an extra heal off the other abilities that you have, plus the heal you're constantly churning out by default with all of your utility. I feel like the healing ramp up would be quite huge over the course of the game, right? But then like you add it to like characters like, or maybe like Janna, right? Or characters that, um, that have this like ability to just shield constantly and work from there. Hell, even like Seraphine now, right? You've got the change, you've got the new Seraphine character and she actually like will ramp up over the course of the fight whilst always dealing out like shields dam and damage by default, right? And with ability haste being part of the game, like I feel like Seraphine was purely designed as a support because Riot knew that with the item changes and the changes to ability haste, this would be a thing. And that's the kind of character you're looking at here. You have this sort of plan for dishing out extra healing and dishing out extra like uh, extra stats and everything that goes with it. This purely makes up the difference for what you're like aiming for here. You have this very strong on type of thing that purely purely makes up the, di the differential for a support item imperial mandate use your cc to call the shots as you mark enemies to be cut down by your team you know what maybe i changed my mind maybe support items actually do have some hope this season <laughs> so kindle jam bandle glass mirror and 850 gold so again 2700 gold total 40 ability power 200 health 20 ability ace these are basically the stats we're looking at every time right and mana regen mark of enmity Abilities that slow or immobilize a champion will do 60 to, bon 60 to 100 bonus magic damage and mark them for 4 seconds. Ally champion damage detonates the mark, dealing an additional- Holy batshit Christ! Hang on. 60 to 100 bonus magic damage by default, and then if someone else attacks it, it this is literally Leona's passive on steroids. Holy Moses. Real talk. I assume, obviously, stuns like counters immobilizing, right? So imagine, but it's it, wait, it's for slows too. Literally, any character can make the best of this, Bruh. Characters like, is there like characters like like just any engaged support or just tanks that can be put into the support? So you, know, you got like Maokai and Set and shit like that. These characters can just ramp the damage up early. And then just build tankier stuff afterwards. Fuck. Can you imagine Leona with this item? This is like Leona plus her passive plus everything else. Or do they just remove Leona's passive now? <laughs> Grants all other things. Okay, so the only like drawback is that this does give ability power rather than like anything else. But I mean, this doesn't really stop any support player from wanting to pick this up just purely for the burn amount. Like the burn mark adding up to 200 damage just by default is just crazy. Like, <laughs> you can, you can call me very, very confused about this because this is like, and this uh, grants other items, 15 ability power when you build them as well. This is an item that actually has quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of punch to put in here. If you can actually like make the best use of this item early game, you are going to have some problems. Plus, I mean, hell, even if you run a Glacial Augment, right? And, button me. 
Although it does say abilities, right? But Glacial Augment off of a single target ability will apply the slow. Does that count? Because that's scary. But yeah, even so, if you're like a CC bot oriented character, right? And you take this item, the early game damage here is huge. Like you can just whittle down like people quite easily. Or just like if you prolong, if you prolong lane phase enough to actually want to keep attacking people and skirmishing on people, you're going to burst down people quite heavily with this item. Plus, the cooldown is only six seconds. Wow. Per enemy, so you can keep applying this to other people. In AoE. In tandem. And it doesn't matter which ally champion does it, because you don't have to mark, you don't have to, like, link with a teammate either. Like, this is literally just, hi, I put this mark on everybody, have fun, and everyone just goes, and everyone gets hit for free extra damage. You put that on top of, uh, what is it, the Night Harvester? Suddenly, some item synergy is getting a bit scary. Because everyone's just running into fights and getting like free movement speed and free damage for literally just sneezing at each other. I think the, the big gripe I have so far with these mythic items is they make things way too accessible for too little like opportunity cost. The big thing is that these were literally balanced around like trying to make meaningful choices. But I think the problem is that some of them are the most meaningful choice is the one that's the easiest to do just because of how simple it is to just apply and get the most out of these items. It's great from a usability standpoint, because a lot of people are just like, oh, well, you know, we're here to do X and Y, and that makes it really simple, and blah, 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 etc. But how on earth, how on earth can you actually expect people to just not choose, like, the most default, easy, like, stuff to work with, and just continue to just stack damage one on top of the other, plus all the items they have, whilst getting all these free extra benefits. Like, the overall... Like, this is the thing, right? And maybe this is, like, a big philosophical thing that I'm going to start going into. But overall, right, if we're purely making these things into a spectator sport, the the whole confusion slash shock factor of people getting blown up in team fights, I feel like that's starting to get a bit overdone. I feel like we're really just trying to get shock value out of the crowd by literally enabling people to get blown up instantaneously by random shit. That, that's always bugged me. And like, the, if you're a player or you're a, like a seasoned player of League of, like, sorry, if you're a pro player that's on the receiving end of this, or if you're a seasoned player that's watching this, right? Do you not just it, like audibly groan every single time Zoe does something? Like, since you know that like the big burst is about to come in from Zoe and everyone's like, ah, Zoe's a fun character. And like everyone gets really mad about that. You already know that that's a thing. So how exactly are you expecting people to react when almost every single character with the right synergistic amount of items is capable of doing the exact same thing? And then some. In chunks. And then you put it together and one person will literally get deleted off the map without even a second thought. That's a scary thought. Like, if I had to rate all these items together, like, you'd start rating them, like, based on usability more than anything else. This item seems to be the biggest letdown out of all of them because it just doesn't grant enough of anything to really work with it, right? Like, yeah, there's a bit of damage that attacks on there, but that doesn't just make it, like, automatically better to work with. And that sucks. So this item's probably the worst of the bunch just purely because it just doesn't give anything. All the Bruiser items are pretty cool. Some of them are just clearly overshadowed by others. So Stridebreaker and Gale Force are both like heavily overshadowed by other items. The all, every other item in this game has a like very like very stock standard use, and they all have meaningful choices. But yeah, unfortunately, I feel like the ball was dropped on three of them being really subpar as a mythic slot. But some of the items that have the most from it are just, like, better versions of what they were before. So, like, Dustblade of Drakthar is literally the same item, but has a ability haste tacked onto it now, which makes it better by default. Um, items like uh, like Sunfire and Leandries do more do more by default. Ludens Tempers does more by default because it's meant to be a mythic item, which is fine. Items like yeah, Everfrost that is better GLP, again, better Proto Belt. These are just upgrades of items that are now just there. The thing that makes me the most nervous about Mythic items so far is just it's purely got to do on its own. It's just purely, purely got to do with... The, I think Omnivamp is the thing that worries me the most. 
like Omnivamp as a concept was just such a bad idea for League when it was when it was Spellvamp. But now that you've put Omnivamp on everything and you already know what Omnivamp can do, if there's not a lot of ways to mitigate it or it's really simple to just get the most out of, then we have a problem. That's that's like going to be a big thing. If we're really like hankering towards this like leechy survivability meta, then that would be a thing. But with the amount of damage that exists in the game from so many different sources, I don't even know if Omnivamp will even give you the chance to survive in some of these attempts. On top of Grievous Wounds and everything being accessible, like more accessible now, it just seems kind of scary to really like put that all in together. I like the bruiser items. I like the way that like some of these go together. The assassin items have a lot of potential. I feel like, like I said, if the if the like, if the game if the planet right was to create meaningful choices, I feel like out of ten they've scored about a seven and a half, just purely because on most circumstances the most meaningful choice is is a possibility and you can get the big feeling out of that, but. The big drawback is that sometimes the easiest choice will just override the fact that you have a little bit of extra work to do just to gain extras. The good news is that, like I said, a lot of characters really have like very um, synergistic and outset like sort of ideas that really work from some of these items, and the other items will have to come like alongside of that, and that will be worthwhile.